Self-love is stupid. This week I began research on a topic that the majority of the men that watch my videos struggle with. I'll tell you more about that later. The point is that in my research, I began reading a book by a young man that claims to have the solution to that problem. I quickly realized that his solution to this big problem is in fact the very root cause of the problem itself. With good intentions, the author suggests that men need to love ourselves more, accept ourselves more, and just be our authentic selves. The problem with this is that most people's authentic self sucks. And if you don't love yourself and accept yourself, there's probably a good reason why. This whole concept of self-love is foreign to the traditional Western masculine mindset. And it is the root cause of our novel so-called mental diseases. It's one of the main reasons why so many men today are failing in fitness, finances, and in relationships with women. For most people, self-love means seeking pleasure, avoiding pain, and playing victim to anyone who calls them out on their bull crap. And even if your concept of self-love is more industrious, with focus on building muscle, making money, or demonstrating value for the attention of women, the problem is exactly with all of the self-focus. When we make ourselves the main focus of our attention and become so self-absorbed that the end of every action is about what I'm going to get, how am I going to look, what am I going to feel like, will other people like me as much as I'm pretending to like myself? We end up as a zealous cult leader in the postmodern pagan religion of self. The problem is that you are a bad God. Instead of being limitless, we become painfully aware of all of our limitations. Yet, the gurus of self-aggrandizement feed us lies about how we can achieve anything. But the truth is that you can't. And even if you could, you don't even really know if you should. We've indulged this self-deception so deeply that today, if some snowflake says that he feels like a woman, the whole world must affirm his delirium lest he melt. Begin to accept the fact that we are limited. That instead of all knowing, we'll always be ignorant. Instead of omnipresent, we could only be at one place, at one time, and that is right here, right now. Life is confined by boundaries, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. If our soul wasn't bound by flesh, we couldn't enjoy physical things like sex, steak, and lifting weights. Let boundaries bind us to what's real and true rather than letting your imagination and feelings get the best of you. Instead of more self-love, we need to see ourselves as we really are and learn to work within the boundaries that the true God has set for us. But that requires humility, which is not about thinking less of ourselves, but thinking about ourselves less. So-called self-love, even if it's licking your wounds and self-soothing after something seriously horrible happens to us, keeps us stuck in the self-defeating cycle of constant self-concern. And that's exactly what Satan wants. So instead, adopt the traditional Western masculine mindset of always keeping mortality at the tip of your mind. Momento mori, you're gonna die. Death is the ultimate boundary that we're all gonna face someday. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, but 100% is on its way. So I will leave you with this. The postmodern mentality of total self-absorption subsists on a diet of self-indulgence, forgetfulness of death, and absence of consideration of an afterlife. They say YOLO. Our ancestors didn't live this way. They confronted death on a daily basis, and they believe that at death, there will be a judgment and then heaven or hell. It was by the recognition of these four boundaries that they directed their entire lives. So I ask you, which is a better way to live for self-love and YOLO experiences or with humility and desire for an easy death and eternity with God? You tell me. I'd love to know. Comment below. Done.